All right, you are watching DefenseReview.com. I'm here with Dave Pavlik of Arsenal Democracy, and he is going to show us this little PDW uh, SBR AR that they have developed. And uh, all right, Dave, tell us about it. Um, yeah, basically, uh, you know, main product we're showcasing here is uh, our new PDW buttstock. Um, we actually built it together on this one, an eight and a half inch uh, 556. Um, so we actually came up with a concept for a complete PDW. Um, obviously, it is an SBR, but uh, it is available 8.5 inch in 5.56 or 300 black. Um, main thing about this buttstock, um, this is an idea that James and I came up with probably uh, about eight months ago. Uh, we really wanted to make a PDW that was more ergonomic. We wanted to make a stock that was comfortable to shoot. Um, someone could aim it uh, with a cheek rest. That was a main complaint that we had. We always found that MP5s, we shot a lot of MP5s in the unit. The two crossbars that you had to rest your cheek on um, were really kind of lousy for getting a good cheek weld and getting a, a good, uh, a good uh, point of aim. So we wanted to make something that uh, was actually just more ergonomic. And we actually put that little curve in the bottom. That's kind of a throwback to the uh, duo stock from back in 07, 08. Yeah. Um, some of us as team guys got to test those. And I mean, of course they were massive, uh, but the, the geometry of them was great. Uh, for uh, for shooting with body armor and shooting in really tight places like inside vehicles, because if you needed to, you could you could shoulder it um, even if you were in really close quarters and right. still kind of uh, and get yourself a little bit of a, a third point of contact right. there. Plus, you have armor on, so yeah, which I mean, gives you armor. You can have that shorter length to pull because you know you're typically wearing a play carry, even if right. a low pro a low profile one. Um, so. Main thing we wanted to do with this stock, other than um, make it more ergonomic and make it shootable, was make it something that you could put on a regular uh, AR. Not something that was so proprietary that you needed your own lower, you needed a special BCG, a special spring. Um, basically, the main issue that we had with some of the other stocks out there is that you can't, you can't do this. You can't shotgun them. Right, just open um, it right up. Right. So. Because if you ever the, have any kind of uh, you know stoppage where you need to clear your barrel, it's important to just pop that pin, yank your BCG out, um, and clear that obstruction. Plus, if you're out in the field and you really did, um, let's say you broke a bolt, you need to change out your BCG. That's just a regular full auto BCG. Yeah. Um, USGI. USGI spec. I mean, yeah. obviously we do a little bit more to it with micro slick and. You know, we put our O-ring, crane spec O-ring, and everything else. But you could right. use one right out of an M4A1. Right. Um, Just mil spec. Standard. And technically, you could, you know, put uh, a Mark 18 upper on there um, if you had your 10.5, right. um, or even a full size. I and mean, we talked about a 14.5 inch or even an 18 inch. If uh, running a short barreled upper wasn't something in the cards for you, like say you were in uh, a state where that's not really allowed, you can shorten it on the backside. There's no law against that now. Uh, right. So you can just now. This is eight position. This is an eight position. Right? This one is eight position. Um, we're probably going to go down to about four positions. Okay. Um, and then you know set it up so that as soon as you yank it out, you get right to your back position, and then you know you can click as you go from there. Um, now, now when you pull it out, you can see the the buffer tube here, and uh, I don't know what you want to say about it other than it being. I mean, is it okay to say about? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is completely self-contained here. Yeah. Um, it is only four inches. It only takes up four inches collapsed. Yeah. Um, obviously, we had to go with our own proprietary system inside here, right. and that's the way we run our buffer system. It's a dual spring system. Right. Um, and this is uh, direct gas impingement? This is using DI, our regular system that we use um, with an adjustable gas block, but this is in this configuration, it's a pistol length. So okay, so Arsenal Democracy did this on its own. Was it a, was it approached or asked to do this, or was this something that you guys just came up with? Well, the buttstock concept was something that we came up with on our own, and it was okay. something we wanted to do on our own. We've been wanting to do it for a long time. What okay. kind of spurred this off into a complete PDW was a request from um, an agency and a couple units for a weapon that um, could bridge the gap from the MP5 to a full-size rifle, full-size assault rifle. Mm -hmm. um, and what we found is that in 5.56 or 300 black, there is no gap. It's just, there should be pistols, and then there should be this. Um, it's kind of erased the gap. The whole subgun concept should probably just, uh, I mean, die. I don't know why they're still, it, it probably just go somewhere to die. All right. uh, uh, what's the length barrel on this? This one has an 8.5 inch barrel. Okay. Um, 
and then and uh, is this a blackout flash hide or what are you running that's actually knight's armament oh knight's armament that's a knight's okay. armament uh, QDC. i'm looking through a lens so I, uh <laughs> yeah, there we go okay and knight's and, armament uh, which one uh the qdc qdc yep um and then uh so it's a key mod system um right. as you can see just like on all our other rails um we have uh, gas ports to access our gas block as you go up and down. Mm. Um, this one's pistol length only, obviously, because it's mm. so short. But you could also, in theory, do an M-lock system. Mm, yeah. You could do an M-lock system. Um, I think uh, we're a little reluctant to kind of move forward in an M-lock. I think okay. KeyMod is probably where it's gonna go, and from what we've seen, the military is going to adopt uh, a system first, it's going to be the system that came out first, and that would be KeyMod. Oh, is, is that why? Just because it came out first? or because... I think because it came out first, and, and I think the M-Lock is kind, of an, uh, it's kind of an answer to a problem that doesn't really exist. I mean, if we're going to be honest, I think M-Lock came out because guys wanted to come up with another option in case KeyMod had to go away. Right, and like, choices are always good, right? I'm, I'm talking about, the, uh, I'm talking about the, uh, the patent that came up right. from, uh, from England. Yes, but it was turned out. It was just a scare for no reason, just because that wasn't exactly key mod. It was their version of key mod. Right. It's not the key mod that's open source that uh, Mr. Kinsel uh, released to everyone back when he was at Voltor. Right. So yeah, uh, Eric Kinsel, yeah, so, right, who was with Voltor, and now he's with BCM, right. Bravo Company Manufacturing. Good so, guy, by the way. Yeah, that's what a I good hear. guy. And, and Paul Buffoni of BCM is a great guy. Yeah. You know, both good people. All right, and great so, company. You know, BCM. Yeah, I mean, they're, they've been putting out, uh, you know, mil-spec stuff for a while. Yeah. And you got a Raptor, by the way, on here. You got a Raptor. We do. We have a Raptor charging handle on yeah. this one. Um, uh, ambidextrous, obviously. It is ambidextrous. Uh, whatever you want to do, we want to make sure we do it ambidextrous. One, because I'm wrong-handed. I'm, right. I'm left-handed, yeah. and I've had to deal with it my whole life. Oh, man. But um, what we found a lot, uh, as far as tactics go, is that... Um, Righties are having to shoot left-handed. Lefties are having to shoot right-handed, yeah. depending on uh, what side of the room you're on. Yeah, and I, right. And I was trained by a guy named Dave Maynard, uh, originally out of Combative Concepts, mm -hmm. and now he's got a new company. But uh, you know, low light, no light, and and he teaches you to switch hands, you know, in battle. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, it, sometimes sometimes you you just don't have another option. I mean, if I have yeah. to choose between uh, exposing seventy percent of myself to shoot with my strong hand, or exposing ten percent of myself to shoot with my other strong hand. Right. That's that's what I'm. And once do. you get used to it, it, you know, it's pretty easy. Now, uh, and then you got uh, whose front sight on here? That's actually another knight's armament uh, front sight we've got on there. Uh -huh. yep. uh, right in the right. Yeah. There. Yep. there we go. Very cool. It's dark in here. It's a little hard to focus, but we got it. Yeah. So uh, we're in a suite. By the way, we're in the sky suite. Just so you know, at uh, Aria in Las Vegas, so we're just shooting up on, on a whatever floor, 32nd floor, 37th floor, whatever it is. Very cool. So, um, all right, so what is this gun package gonna go for? Is, uh, let's say you do a civilian version, you know, just uh, semi-auto, uh, you know, 14 and a half inch barrel, 16 inch barrel. What would, what would this? Well, I mean, you know, our rifles, our MSRP on the civilian price is, uh, I mean, it's 1940, and it's been 1940. For military, it's, uh, it's closer to $1,800. Um, with the advent of using this stock, if it's part of the complete rifle package, we're really only going to mark that up another couple hundred dollars, um, just because you're you're buying the complete rifle. If you're right. just going to buy this separate, and um, for people that don't want to get the entire system, we recommend that they just get it separate because it's something you can just screw and bolt right onto any uh, any weapon system. Right. This you're talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about the PDW stock itself. Right. Just right there in a self-contained yep. piece of cake. I, I won't I won't say what it's going to cost, but I will tell you it costs less than other PDW butt stocks that are on the market. So we are sub four hundred dollars for Very sure. Very cool. And what what do you got here? What's uh, what's this about? This is actually uh, was something from Knights that's actually discontinued. We were talking to Trey about it uh, the okay. other day. Um, it is actually a uh, a belt clip. So right. yeah, it looks like yeah, it looks like a belt clip. If you um, if you were getting ready to fast rope um, or stow your weapon system, mm -hmm. you would tuck it right into your belt to the side, mm -hmm. you'd rope in, and then you could immediately pull it out right. and bring it in action. It's kind of a, a built-in um, built option instead of running the old C-clamp, Velcro, um, or magnet mm -hmm. link uh, belt mm -hmm. fixer. And we should mention that this is your uh, upper and lower receiver as well. This is our, uh, our upper and lower receiver. Um, our, new, our new model that we're calling it is AD16. Right. Okay, and who's, uh, who's rail? That's our rail as well. That's your rail as well. Yep. So your key mod rail, your upper and lower receiver, all pretty much, yeah, it's, I mean, the, virtually the whole gun is yours. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Then you run a little, little aim point. 
Yeah, the Aimpoint T1. T1. Yeah. Love the Aimpoint Micro. Um, and then the mount is actually a uh, ARMS. The spacer is also from ARMS, and it's their new Mark II, uh, their Mark II lever. Very cool. All right, and that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we've got more stuff to come. Very cool. Very cool little package. A little, oh, man, that's nice. So, uh, and when will this be available? Uh, it'll be available the first quarter this year. Very cool. Thank you, David. I really appreciate it. Arsenal and Democracy at SHOT Show 2015, and you are watching DefenseReview.com.